dwarfs, our most hated of enemies. We're going to need somebody to take out those cannons. I know just the one. Butt Stallion, you didn't drag poor Butt Stallion into this, did you? He's not up to the challenge. He sticks out like a sore thumb. They'll find him. Shut up, you three. The hell they will. He's got a two-day head start, which is more than he needs. But Stallion's got friends in every town and village from here to Table One. He speaks a dozen languages, knows every local custom. He'll blend in, disappear. You'll never see him again. With any luck, he's won the grill quest already. So these guys, they pretty much follow you everywhere you go. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, does anybody here speak unicorn? Alright guys, we're back. This is Grail Quest Game 4. We're going to be at Day 2. This is 8 a.m. I'm not really all there in my mind yet. <laughs> I'm going to kick on Dwarves, my almost hated enemies. I don't think I've had one-on-one -on -one matchup against Dwarves in a, a long, long time. Um, this scenario is going to be you get one point for every character you kill to a maximum of two. One if you keep your BSB alive, and two if you capture more standards than your opponent. Um, I'm really excited about playing against Dwarves. Um, I, especially because I have the Basha Axe, which means I'm like double of my bonuses and cause fear against dwarves. We'll see how good that does. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not playing against Paul. You probably realize I played against him in Game Four almost every tournament. There's a game just two days, and I play him in like every tournament, like five or six tournaments in a row. So it's gonna be different. But let's see how it goes. And I look just quick, fast look at my army. And it's going to be my chaff's duty to try to get on the corner here and try to take out his cannons. But Stallion, can you do it? Can you do it? Well, let's take a look at the dwarf army. Um, he's going to put like all his big characters into his unit of hammerers. And they're going to be on the far left. So I'm going to try to avoid them. And I am think I can take out the rest of the army and just avoid them. Because, because he's going to have two big unit of quarrelers spread out. He's still going to take up a little bit more than half the board, so he's not really castling. Even though he has his war machines behind his lines, it's just because he's taking up so much space with his quarrelers. So I'm thinking, you know, I can take out the other three units and just maybe ignore the big unit that has all his characters as long as I can. So because of that, I'm not going to be set up across from them, which, I mean, I, I may be smarter just to go ahead and take them on, but I'm, I was thinking I could take on everything else. Now look at his deployment. Um, this is actually done while I'm, after I vanguarded, which you can pretty much see how he's deployed. And underneath his arm there is his big unit of hammers with all his characters. So I'm thinking to avoid that and just go up, you know, through the center, have my trolls come around the building, and I think I can. I'm hoping I can wipe up his lines. I'm not really um, wanting to engage the unit that has his rune lord, his dwarf lord, with the shield bearers, and his BSB. And so this is my deployment because of that. And uh, another thing is I have my trolls on the side because his fire cannons on the far, far left. So I'm hoping that I can, you know, blunt the shots at my trolls. Because even if he kills them, he maybe he'll maybe he'll kill one troll with the fire cannon. One of those can shoot at my trolls. So I'm trying to keep from all his shooting to be able to concentrate my trolls and and mainly wipe them out really fast. Okay, so he wins first turn, and this is the end of Dwarf Turn 1. And I'm just going to show you pretty much the damage he's going to do to me. Now, first, um, the fire cannon is actually going to shoot at my pump wagon that's over there, and he's going to go ahead and destroy that. Um, he's going to get his quest throw a direct hit on my um, savages, so it's 13 hits. He rolls like 12 wounds out of 13 hits. I only save like 3, so I lose 9 right off the bat. And I think he kills one more with crossbows, but that's just that's just 
horrible to start off with. There's other cannon destroys the um, stone wall that's in front of my Doom Diver. And you know, he's really only killed a pump wagon with his cannons, but that grudge thrower just really starts to decimate my my savages right off the bat. Okay, so Orc and Goblin's turn one, and this is the point where I realized that when I picked up my, all my dead models from the grudge thrower, I had picked up my great shaman and <laughs> moved out as well. So I looked everywhere, like, where'd my great shaman go? And then I realized I had it in my dead pile. And this also happened at the beginning of the game where I could not find my war boss, and I looked everywhere through all my cases, and I realized it was already in the front rank of my savages. So, you know, I, I, I'm not all there yet this early in the morning. All right, so my turn, and it's not very going very good the movement because my mangler barely moves. Duke of Orc barely moves when they're random movement. So this holds my trolls up. And so I don't fully march my savages because I'm a little bit afraid of them getting away from the troll leadership. And again, I probably should have just attached my um, gigantic spider to the trolls. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it, but I didn't think about that. That's something I really need to think about in the future. And so this is the rest of my movement here. And I, I reformed my um, bullfighters. I should have had them formed up like this to start with, but I didn't think about it. If I did, then I could have charged that cannon right off my, on my first turn here like this. All right, and Butt Stan's also up here, so he's ready to charge that cannon. He has dreams of, of gr glory here. Um, my magic, he scrolls, well, you know, he spell breaks my um, Fulgork. My shooting is mostly ineffective, and we will be going to turn two. So Dwarf Tour 2, and you can see he gets another direct hit with his Grudge Thrower. I'm down to just 23 models out of this horde here from two Grudge Thrower shots, basically. Uh, the only good news here is that he shoots his Fire Cannon at my Trolls, but it hits the Chariot first, and he rolls a 1 to wound, so he doesn't wound the Chariot. So that um, basically saves my, my Trolls. Uh, I, th after th I think it's after this shot, his hand, um, crossbow is going to destroy my Mangler. And on the other cannon is going to destroy my Doom Diver. And his movement, he's going to charge my wolves here. I'm going to flee because I think he can't get the butt stallion because I think it's too long of a charge. But he's going to roll like a 10. He's going to make the charge on poor butt stallion and kill poor butt stallion. His dreams of glory are over. Okay, so Orc and Goblin turn 2. I really need to get in, get into their lines. Um, <laughs> my wolf riders are going to fail animosity. They're going to have to charge the crossbows, and it's a long, long charge, so I think, oh, I'll probably fail it. They don't fail it. They make it into the flank of those crossbows. Ugh. And then my bunker's going to fail on a monster, and he's going to kill, like, five night goblins in the unit. Um, <laughs> so um, when I go into magic here, I get Gorkle fix it off on his um, crossbows. I'm just trying to save the lives of those wolves. Um, but then I'm going to get a foot of Gork off of his long beards. I'm going to kill half the unit. I think I can have Irresistible Force, and then my miscast is not going to wound my Shaman, but it's going to kill some more Goblins. But I, I kill about half those Longbeards, so I've made them almost ineffective, so it's almost to the point where I, now I really wish I um, could have um, had them going another way to face the um, long, um, Hammerers. And you can see here in, in his turn 3, he's going to start moving his Hammerers towards my Savages. He can't charge them yet, but... You know, and I'm at the point where I can't face those hammers, so I wish I had been facing them to start with because I've done so much damage to the Longbeards. But if I can just get into combat, beat those Longbeards, beat up the um, crossbows and stuff, I won't have to worry about those hammers, and I'll be taking out the rest of his army. And, and again, with his shooting, he's going to decimate my savages even more. I'm down to just 15 guys left in that unit. I mean, I ba could probably barely take on the Longbeards at this point. But I still think I have the pretty good shot if I can just get into combat. I don't need a 9 to charge him in my turn. And in, in the wolf combat, this time he does, he breaks my wolves. Um, he doesn't chase them and they just run. I, he might have even wiped them out, I'm not sure. Um, the rest of his shooting, I think he's going to kill a troll. And <laughs> it's just not going to be good. Alright, so we have my turn 3. I mean, I have to charge his long beards. I'm down to just 15 guys. I mean, I can't no longer really just reform to face those hammers. I mean, even if I do reform to face him, he doesn't have to charge me with his hammers. He can just you know shoot all his crossbows and war machines. And my savages and nearly wipe me out. So 
I, I feel like I have no choice now. I have to charge even though I need a 9. And I don't get it. I roll an 8. So um, I'm just going to move forward here like 4 inches. And I'm going to be where he needs a either a 6 or a 7 to charge my flank. Uh, I try to put my spotter up. And once I get my spotter up here, I realize that even if he charges my spotter, he can, um, you know, either pursue or overrun into my flank anyway. So moving the spot up here is not really going to help. Um, but it, it might, but you know, for the most part it's not. Duke of Work's still going too slow. <laughs> He's not getting anywhere. Uh, I'm not really going to be able to do anything. So, man, I do get every go off on my um, Savages, so I'm expecting to move my War Boss over. At least he gets to re-roll hits against those guys, and I'm hoping somehow I can hold off for the inevitable, inevitable um, charge that's coming my way. And Dwarf turn 4, and that's what happens. He charges, well he charges my spotter, and I flee with the spotter, and I think this is a big mistake, because I was thinking, oh, well, he's just going to hit my flank anyway. But if I if I just let him fight the spotter, then he would have come into my flank, and I would have been able to fight him on my turn. I could have countercharged with my chariot, and maybe even my bunker, and maybe then I could have held. So I, you know, I was thinking I was just going to save the points from the spotter because I was going to lose flank charge anyway, but I wasn't thinking about countercharging. That's what I did in my last game. You know, I countercharged with Duke of Orc after he had charged me, and I should have done the same thing here, but I just didn't. I didn't think. I think. I think I was just thinking that I had lost, and I wasn't thinking about ways to really get out, out of it or try to improve the situation, and I should have been thinking about that instead. So when we get into the fight here, um, He's going to challenge with his lord, and so you know I answer with my lord. I'm thinking, oh, I'm getting doubles or everything, and then when he tests, when he tells me about the master rune and steel, and I had his army list, but it didn't say what it did, so I didn't realize what it did, and it makes me only strength five, so I'm not strength eight. <laughs> so I do do one wound to him. I don't think he even wounds me, but I'm going to lose this fight badly. I think it was on like a three of the reroll, and I fail it. I run. I do get away. I was thinking I was going to kill the dwarf lord, and you know all I did was just one wound to it. So it's still alive. I'm running. The situation is very, very bad. So my turn four. I'm going to rally those savages. I don't counter charge or anything. I mean, I have nothing that can take on those hammers. Duke of War just will not make it to those crossbows to save his life. I think he needed one more or two more inches. Uh, oh. it, it, anything. <laughs> I can't. Get, I can't get him to get into combat this game. I don't know. So, um, my magic and shooting. You know, I'm just trying to get his long bears down, so I can just try to get the points for them. If I can get them below 25 percent, I think they're almost there. And um, that's pretty much my turn. So, dwarf turn five. He's gonna charge his hammers in the front of my savages. You know, I forgot I lost frenzy. I could have fled, and I, I maybe would have got away. Um, but I don't. Um, then he charges in the flank with his um, crossbows. And um, his shooting is going to destroy Duke of Orc. Duke of Orc did nothing this game. And I think any other shooting I have left, yeah, I think he's you know, he's picking it off. So um, we're going to the combat. Um, my lord, um, this time uh, I, I'm able to kill his BSB because when he issues a challenge with his lord, I just answer it on my champion. So my BSB, my um, General is going to kill his BSB, so I'm going to at least get one battle point for killing the character. I'm beaten badly then. He restrains with his hammers to reform to face my bunker. He pursues with his crossbows, and his crossbows run me down. And Orkin Goblin turn 5, and my trolls are going to pass stupidity on a 4. So they're going to charge the flank of those crossbows. And this is actually kind of important, because right now he's only captured one banner from me. So if I capture that banner, we're even on banners. And... You know, any little points I can get, I'll keep it from being a 20 0. Alright, uh, so they charge. I back up my bunker. I was going to put my BSB into the building, and he just he warns me, you know, if you do that, it does my cannons will do D6 hits. And I forgot about that. I thought the cannons would have to hit the wall or something to destroy that, and my BSB would have been safe in there because I'm expecting to get charged by his hammers. Um, so, you know, he's good sport there and warns me, so I'm just thinking, well, I'm going to flee. And, um,. When he charges me, and I'll, at worst, I'll be giving up half points. And I guess I'm not sure. Maybe my it will count my BSB to be still alive. I'm at the bottom of six, so hopefully I can rally, and my BSB would be alive when I get another battle point for that. 
And Dwarf turns six, and this is a disaster. He's obviously going to charge me. I'm just going to flee. I roll double ones to flee. Oh, so he, he wipes me out. Oh, so I've lost all those points. I mean, I couldn't hold. I mean, I was going to get killed if I held anyway. I, I had to flee and then hope I could rally on my bottom of my turn, but I've got the double ones. Uh, the rest, is sh he's going to be shooting at my troll, but he's not going to wipe them out or even get them below 25%. And that's going to be the end of his turn and just have the bottom of my turn. So the bottom of my turn looks like this. All I have left is my trolls, my gigantic spider. I think I had my rallied wolf fighters in the bottom corner somewhere, and I maybe have a chuck left. Um, only thing I got from him is half points for his um, long beards, his crossbows, his BSB. And the important thing about me losing my bunker at the end is that I had killed his BSB and captured a bar another ch banner, so I was up two banners to one for those two points. So we had to ask the tourney organizer, me getting run down like that from fleeing a charge, do those two banners count as him capturing it? Um, the organizer says yes, so he's going to be up three banners to two, so I'm going to lose those two battle points for banners as well. So this is like a th thorough massacre here. I have very, very little left. Um, <laughs> I just could not get into combat with most of my stuff. I really, really needed Hand of Gork. Where were you when I needed you, Hand of Gork? So we had this up. It's going to be a 16-4 victory for the dwarves. He's going to get four bonus points. I'm only going to get one. Uh, so I'm, I'm thoroughly beaten after going undefeated on day one. I'm only going to get five five battle points in this game. And I'm going to be sent to the bottom tables. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I guess I probably should have just went up against his um, hammers to start with, lined up against them, and not tried to go through the center and take everything else out. Because it was all that shooting coming. I mean, the, I guess the grudge stores were still hitting me anyway, but I, I don't know. <laughs> uh... Well, this is going to send me to the um, lower tables. I'm going to be taking on another Warriors um, army in Game 5, and hopefully I can reverse the way things went here in the morning. So despite the beating here, um, this is really a fun opponent. And he's pretty much the only person I talked to who understood my display board and where it was from and everything, and Butt Stallion, and he really wanted to kill Butt Stallion too. So, you know, blame him for Butt Stallion's death, not me. So Butt Stallion death tally, he died in four out of four games. Oh, Bust Down, will you ever live? Uh, oh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'm taking on Warriors. Feel free to like or subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. Hope you enjoyed it.